Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. First of all, I want to thank everybody who has responded to the previous videos and uh, have shown their interest in the particular uh, tire upgrade and uh, particularly in Jimny. I want to thank each one of you for the support and the enthusiasm that you have shown uh, on the previous videos. It's really important to get support from the viewers. That is what gives us the energy to move forward. Today, I want to test out the issues and problems that we have with the 235 section tires uh, that are present in the Jimny. Overall, the tires, they are doing a really good job. But in spite of the fact that they are a really good upgrade for the Jimny, there are certain issues that arise with upsizing the tire size to the 235s. And uh, today I'll take you on a test where we can find out what are the problems and what are the situations that particularly cause the 235s to create the problems or create an issue as such. The major issue that arises is that uh, they start to rub the body in extreme articulation scenarios and uh, after that there is very little gap that is available to accommodate the snow chains that uh, one has to put and are compulsory to put on in the winters, especially in the icy situations. So given the fact that you install a 235 section tyre onto the Jimny and uh, after that you have got uh, very less chances to accommodate a snow chain onto the tyres. Because the gap between the underbody of the tyre wells and the tyre itself, it is very less. That is what has come up to my notice, according to my experience and uh, what all tests I could uh, do. And whoever is saying the 235s, they are perfectly fine, including me. Uh, they need to understand that there are certain situations, call it be 15% of the situation or the 20% of the situation, where one needs to understand that the tires will eventually rub the underbody or the wheel well, the fender lining or whatever you want to call it. The major issue that arises is in the rear axle because that is a soft suspension setup. So eventually the wheels or the axle they articulate and uh, the one, one tire that gets inside the wheel well, it starts to touch the underbody in a given uh, set of circumstances. So if there are going to be four people with the luggage, it is more than understood that eventually the tires they are going to get uh, rubbed onto the underbody. And that is the kind of situation I will try to show it to you guys today. Let's go on a journey guys.
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the car in such a situation so that we can check out the wheel articulation. One tire is gonna lift up completely into the air. That is a rear tire. And I hope we don't topple. I think we are at that point. Now let's check out the wheel articulation. So this is the kind of situation I wanted to test the vehicle in. And the vehicle is in a pretty much tilted position towards the right. Towards the vehicle's right actually. So as we can see this is the situation and the car uh, just wants to tip over to the right uh, hand side. There's a lot of weight onto the right tire and the left tire is like not having that much of a weight. But this is the kind of situation I'm testing this in. So we have got a lot of articulation, even my hand is not enough to like accommodate this entire thing, one hand or a two hand. That is where the difference is. And this tire is lifted, as we can see. Yeah. Okay, so the situation right now is that this wheel has started to touch or is uh, just about to touch the underbody. And as we can see, Nothing can get inside this tire and the body. There's no gap left. This is my pinky finger. And even this refuses to go inside. So this is the amount of uh, gap I get. Not even like half a centimeter. So that is one drawback. Just imagine you are stuck into the ice or the snow and you have put on snow chains and you want to get out of this tricky situation. There is no gap going to be left for the chain to be accommodated and eventually it's going to scrape the entire and the body. That's a huge bill to pay actually. So whoever wants to install this 235, I would recommend putting on a lift kit or go with the 215, a smaller size. So what I would uh, recommend is either one goes for a 215 size or you just uh, put on the lift kit. Putting on the lift kit is the best option because it gives you a lot of access to more rugged terrain, more extreme scenarios and more uh, undulations that can be also overcome with the lift kit. If you install the lift kit that is going to give you a lot of access to more uh, off-roading capabilities and the height is going to be raised. You can easily accommodate the snow chains also. There's no gap left between the mud flap. This is the company fitted mud flap. So the gap is bare minimal. And if you want to install snow chains or if there's uh, weight onto one side of the car, you're going to be stuck. And without the lift kit, the two, three, fives, they don't work properly.
eventually you are losing a piece of functionality that you want in your off-roader. There's no gap as you can see. My hand can't get inside between the mud flap and the 235. Now one thing is really important to understand, this is a really extreme situation that I've put my uh, vehicle into. The Jimny is uh, on three tires, one of the tires is not touching the surface beneath it. So in this particular kind of situation, where the car is uh, articulating in such a manner, you're going to lose the vehicle's functionality. And if the right rear tire over here starts to touch the underbody, you eventually can't get out because the body touching the wheel is actually going to slow it down or uh, act more like uh, breaking the wheel actually. So that's a tricky situation. And if you are driving on a plain road or uh, certain amount of undulations are there and uh, the track is not that extreme, then the 235s can do a good job. Otherwise, I would suggest... Uh, to go with the 215s if you want the full functionality without the lift kit. Uh, so I want to say if the car is stuck uh, in 20% of the situations where the undulations are bigger under the vehicle like this, in this particular situation, then uh, you are eventually going to touch the wheels under the body and in full load with the luggage with four people, this is easily going to scrape the underbody. The wheels are going to touch at some point or the other. So to get rid of all this touching and rubbing, you will have to install a proper lift kit for the 235s to be accommodated. These are the company fitted alloys and these are 5.5J. The width of the alloy is 5.5J, 5.5J. Even with the company fitted alloys, the tire is touching the underbody in extreme circumstances. So my recommendation is, uh, if you want to go for the 235s, a lift kit is very important to install. Without a proper lift kit, they are going to touch the wheel well in some manner or the other. When a lot of stress is put onto one side of the axle or one wheel, it, it eventually starts to touch the underbody or the wheel arc and uh, the wheel well comes in contact with the tyre. So installing a proper lift kit is a good solution to install the 235s and give the Jimny the full capability and the potential to go for an extreme off-road. In most of the situations, the 235s, they don't touch the wheel well or the underbody of the wheel arcs. But in extreme situations like this, where the car is uh, having a lot of weight onto one side and is tilted at an extreme angle towards one side, you will have to install the lift kit. The benefit of a lift kit is more than understood in such a scenario. It is going to lift your vehicle like two inches higher and that is how you can easily accommodate the uh, 235s into the wheel well. Apart from this, I do not see any other potential to install the 235s and give the vehicle a full uh, capability to go off-road.